What's up, Jones Bones? It's your girl, you not to leave random. And I just woke up, so excuse the flat hair. It has been growing. Right now, it's about, I wanna say July. And I was having the thought the other night that my channel was for vulnerability and being open. And I was thinking to myself about how there's people in this world that I have impacted that I don't necessarily know. And the reason that thought popped into my head because I was sitting and I was drinking with a group of people. Um, that's one thing that you will always find. There's always going to be a group of foreigners that like to drink and like party whenever you go overseas. Um, but I was drinking with a group of people and I just, you know, I was a little tipsy and I was like, you know, you ever think about the people that you've had an impact on? Like, has anyone ever reached out to you and said, hey, you've had an impact on me? And everyone was like, no. And I was just, I don't know why, but I was thinking about a message I got on Facebook a long while ago that was someone who was like hey you really had an impact on me I'm so thankful for you um, and I didn't know who the person was so I guess it's just been in the back of my mind just cooking this entire time and I want to take this opportunity to speak about it my ch channel doesn't always have to be the vulnerability of my pain it can be the vulnerability of my love. So, right after this intro, we will talk about a list of people that I will forever hold dearly in my heart. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. And we are back. And I don't have like a ranking. This isn't like who I love most and who I don't love. This is just kind of like off the heart. I did think about it a little bit, like who would I say? And um, I guess we're just going to figure this out together. I don't, like I feel like I sound very somber right now. I did just wake up and I just was immediately like, let's go record a video. Um, and not even in that order. I was like up and I was like, why am I up at 7 a.m.? That's the thing. I'm up at like 7 a.m. Like before my alarm clock on a day I don't have work. So I was like, okay, well, let me just come into the living room. Let me just open the door. Like, let me just da 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 da. And all of these things just led to me recording this video right now. So i think that the number one person that i will say and again this doesn't have a specific ranking but this is someone that i love dearly with all of my heart it might seem like a surprise to you but it's my mother <laughs> and i'm not talking about my birth mother i am talking about my adoptive mother um i literally cried to myself when i had this realization that like i love her and i still do love her and that realization kind of like made me feel sad because I don't ever see our relationship ever healing. So it's just like I have this love for someone that I don't think will ever like love me back. And like love isn't necessarily a transactional thing, but like the transaction does help it. Um, so there's my mother, and then past that point, it is my, uh, adoptive father, okay? I love him, okay? And I had to ask myself, like, do I love him? Do I really love him? Enough to say I love him, but yes. He has a place in my heart. I still think about him from time to time. Anywhere I go, to, whenever I go to a different country, I'm taking the Bible that he gave me with me. Even though I've never read it, I still bring it with me everywhere. Like it's, it's, it's been to Korea with me. It's where I am now. Like when I moved house, it was right on my bedside. Okay. I don't know. Like, it's funny because growing up, my mom always kept her Bible by her bedside. And so like, I, I've adopted the trait again, even though I've never really read the Bible fully. Um, and I got that Bible when I was like in, I want to say in like the fifth grade. So like, 
like that's an old Bible. <laughs> it's a children's Bible too. Um, I remember going through and singing the songs and looking at the pictures. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but yes, my dad, my mom, and then the next person would be my little sister. Um, and this is another one that kind of makes me sad. Uh, I guess a lot of the people that I love is going to make me sad because they're not really in my life right now. Um, we do have some people that are still in my life a little bit later down the line, but um, my little sister, and it's not that she's not in my life, it's just that I don't feel like our relationship is how I would have wanted our relationship to be. I think I'm very honest about that on my page. I fear that like the certain conditions that we grew up with conditioned us to be certain ways towards each other. And I don't know how to fix that, but also I don't think that that's something that I can fix alone. You know what I mean? Um, and we have different paths as well, but I do have a lot of love for my little sister. Um, even though I, I also feel like she was like, like in some ways she reminds me of the people that used to bully me in high school, but like, you know, like bully, like, like she reminds me a little bit about, of my bullies. It's not that she bullies me. Well, she used to when she was like young, like, I mean like a little baby, but that was just because the culture around the household was to bully Aaliyah. But like later on in life, it was just like, I guess it's not even that she reminded me of my bullies, but yes, she did. But it just reminded me of like, people just not understanding me, like not getting me like, I felt like an alien, a piranha around my sister, right? And um, I think that's also a little barrier that like impedes our sisterly bond. Um, and that, that part is on me, honestly. Can't put that on my sister, that is me. Um, so my mom, my dad, my sister and i know you might be thinking well what about your other mom your other dad um no i don't really have any deep connection to them so it's just my mom my dad my sister now i have other sisters like birth sisters and i really do hold like a special part in my heart for my older sister now, for those who don't know, I am adopted. I think I've already dropped that a couple times. But um, I did have a sister that I was kind of raised with until I was in the fifth grade. Now, this sister had cerebral palsy. Um, if you don't know about cerebral palsy, the best way I can put it and the way that I always understood it is that my sister was always going to be a baby. She was never going to walk. She was never going to talk. She had to be fed through a feeding tube. Like, that was my sister. And I didn't necessarily grow up with the knowledge that she was my sister, but I always had, like, a special connection with her. I remember my mom often saying that, like, if she, like, gave me a whooping, she had to give me a whooping on the other side of the house because as soon as I cried, my sister would cry too. Like, we were, like, connected in that way. Like, if she heard my my tears she was like oh yeah you sister I can't come back I'm gonna like I'm gonna cry for you um, and my mom would often say that as a joke <laughs> but um, we were connected and I felt like this really deep sadness when we were separated I've talked about it before but like you know it was pretty much like it was moving up to my adoptive mom trying to say that she wanted to like stop taking care of my sister. She, she, my sister, you know, had to be carried. She had, she was a lot of work, not even gonna lie. But it was like, it was something she would say like in passing and in passing like, oh, my back hurts. But like, my mom was always like really a complainer. And, <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest, like, as a child, she was always, like, a complainer. And so I didn't really realize that it was really happening until I came home one day. And my mom was like, it wasn't even I got home, but my mom was like, oh, yeah. They came and they got Kayla. And 
I'll say her name, Kayla. K-A-I-L-A. -A. My name's Aaliyah. Um, they came and got Kayla. And I remember just starting to cry. And I was just like, I felt this emptiness. And I just, I felt so bad. I felt so bad. <laughs> I felt so bad. And in that moment, my mom, I don't know what like possessed her to say this, but she turned to me and she was like, oh yeah, the reason that you're feeling bad is because I was like your cousin. I think it was probably guilt. <laughs> I think it was probably guilt, but that was your cousin. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> I feel so bad. Um, my mom didn't really keep it in contact with her. I don't know why. She wouldn't have tried to keep some type of contact with her. But uh, in my fifth grade, um, that was the last time I saw my older sister. And realistically, I probably never will see her again. Um, and that, like, I mean, I know it might seem like we're going on a tangent, but we're talking about love. And that's something that I think still still like gets me if you can't tell so my mom my dad my sister my sister and then um, from that point I would go on to say that I love my fifth grade teacher the most okay and I kind of feel like I could say her name, but also like immunity reasons. Um, I'll just say her first name, which is Sheila. I love Sheila, okay? Sheila was my teacher in the fifth grade when I transitioned to going back to school. Before that, all of my teachers made me feel like teachers are mean, teachers are bad. I don't like teachers. Um, and Sheila really, gave me the benefit of the doubt a lot of times. Even though I was being a little naughty, she gave me the benefit of the doubt. And having her give me the benefit of the doubt put me into a position where I wanted to become a teacher, which, you know, right now I am a teacher. Um, I really did love Sheila. And it wasn't even on the, like, oh, she was like a love that I like romantically loved. I don't know, like there's teachers that like I liked, but you know what I mean? Um, Sheila, she made me feel safe. Like it was a breath of air after my childhood. And then, you know, I was also starting to go through puberty and she, she I remember walking in the hallway in the front of the line and she would say, pick your chin up, walk straight. Um, and that, those words really stuck with me. I remember talking about it later on in life, like in high middle school. I was like, oh yeah, I gotta pick my chin up and walk straight. And I'm thinking about that teacher and what she said to me. And um, my mom didn't like that. She's like, I always tell you to walk straight. Why is she more special? <laughs> but like, it was just someone that like, gave me the benefit of the doubt. Like she told me, chin up, walk straight, you're beautiful, let's go. You know, and that really had an impression on my heart. And like I said, made me want to be a teacher. So I'm very thankful to Sheila. Um, and then past that point, you know, I wouldn't say there's any middle school teachers that, I'm sorry about the dog barking if you can hear it, but there weren't really any middle school teachers that I was like, wow, I love. I had some likes, I had some crushes, but not like love, like always in my heart, like, oh my goodness. But there was a girl, there was a girl in middle school that I really did love, okay? And like... I mean, like, love, like, I guess at this point, the people that I'm talking about when I say love are people that forever changed me. But there's this girl in middle school where she was just, she was beautiful. I think she was beautiful. I don't necessarily remember her name, and um, I don't even know if that really matters. 
but I think she was from like the New York area. She came down and um, y'all know I have a thing for hips. So she has some hips and like this is a little middle school me. She was one of those girls that like like had baby hairs and she would always wear lip gloss. Like she was one of those girls. And I, I really did like her. I really did like her and I, I guess to a certain point I loved her because I remember that was after that summer. If you don't know about that summer, I talk about it a lot on my page. I'm not necessarily going to bring it up right now, but it was during, well, it was after that summer. And I remember feeling like I can't smile. Like it really had a deep effect on me that summer. Um, and I remember I was like, I don't know how to smile. I would look myself in the mirror and I'm just like, smile. Like, I just, I just started to feel numb. And I was taking medicine on and off for my Adderall. Not my Adderall. <laughs> I was taking medicine on and off for my ADHD. And I just felt like, like a zombie. Like, like a zombie, 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 eh. Eh, what's in your? I'm sorry, that that song, what's in your head? Um, zombie, just popped in my head by the cranberries. Check it out. Um, and I was just like, wow. There was a time where I looked at her, and she always seemed to be smiling. And I told myself, okay, I'm gonna smile like her. <laughs> so. I would practice smiling and I just smile more and more and more and like like I'm even smiling like this is a genuine smile but like there was a day where I looked myself in the the mirror at school and I was smiling and I stopped smiling and I thought wow I have like laugh lines and I was so amazed by it that I told my mom, I was like, I have laugh lines for smiling so much. And she was just like, what? You know, and I guess that that's like a reoccurring kind of thing in my life where like there's something going on and I want to share it with my mom. And then the reaction is like, okay, like um, <laughs> we're on different wavelengths. <laughs> but yeah, girl in middle school, Girl, I loved you. I remember the first time you took the lip gloss off your lips and put it on my lips. And I was like, wow, this gives me butterflies. <laughs> but yeah, it was her. And then like in high school, I have to say like the people, the people that I loved, people that I loved in high school. This is when like, you start having more crushes. And I wouldn't necessarily say crush is love, but um, I would say that out of my high school years, there's two people that really stood out to me. One wasn't a crush, one was a friend, and her name was Antoinette. I don't know if I've ever showed Antoinette on my channel. Um, she has the voice of an angel, like literally the voice of an angel. She can sing. And it's not sing, she can sing. Oh, and I, I still love Antoinette. Like, I think about her. Even though I don't, like, reach out to her, talk to her often, I still think about I still love her, that girl. Like, she made high school bearable. Like, I love her. And then there was another person. And, like, this was... I talked about this person before, um... I would call her like my first love, but like it was like a crush that turned into love that like really solidified for me that I don't really care about gender. I just care about how someone makes me feel. And in this case, someone didn't even want me. So like, I guess it was just the joy that she brought to me, made me feel loved. And I really, really, really love this person. I mean, to the point that I, like, I had one of those things where you go home and cry into the pillow about this person. Like, in high school, 
Um, and that person's name was Made. Again, I talked about them before on my channel. Um, very open. If I remember, I will put the link or something up here so you guys can see that video if you're interested. Um, so, all again, it is my mom, my dad, my sister, my sister, my teacher, my first crush, my friend Antoinette. And my first, like, love. Even though it wasn't, like, a relationship that I still love that person. Um, and then past that, you know, I loved my, my, like, first adult boyfriend, David. Like, I love David. I still love David. I wonder how he's doing in life. Like... I do. Like, I love David, without a doubt, still to this day. Um, but I, I hurt him, I think. I hurt him too much. Not on purpose. Definitely not on purpose, but I think I hurt him. Or we were just too young for the burden of me. I think that's a reality, too, for a lot of people. Because I came with a lot. I'm still a lot, you know, but yeah, that's just to say, I, I, I love that Afro man. <laughs> and I would say the next person that I love would be Sabria. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you've met Sabria. I've taken out all of the videos, including Sabria, but I love Sabria. I loved and I love Sabria. Like... She was a big part of my life. Like, you know, the other day I was going through my Google Docs and I took her name off of our shared folder and all of the pictures that like we had together and the places that we did, you know, we went to comic cons together. So I had a lot of pictures of those. I didn't delete them. I just took her off of the folder. There was just a part of me that I couldn't imagine that she would come back to look at those pictures. And I wanted to cut down on the ability to, like, interact with her. Because I do have moments where I go back and look people up online. Like, I'm one of those. I'm one of those people. Like, there are moments where I went to my ex's. Uh, Instagram picture just to see how he is you know I check up on people um, even if I don't like say anything I check up on people but I was like okay well let's cut this out that's never going to change don't hold that in your heart anymore but I can't that was like a pivotal part for me she was the first person as an adult that I told about my life I don't know how much of it she believed. I don't know her impression of me. I thought it could have been good, but, like, I really don't know. Um, but I did love her, and I do love her. And just because I want to say, in a way, we grew apart, but really, we yeah, it was really we grew apart. We really grew apart. I was going into my occult thing. I was trying to be better. I wanted to stop being so negative, but like I was already in a loop. I started being more open about my feelings online, um, which people do not like. People do not like if you talk about your feelings on how someone made you feel. But I think I don't feel bad for it. I mean, I never went back and watched the video that she was talking about where she was like, I can't believe my friend would, like, talk about me like that online. But also, I felt like we were already growing apart. So I felt like me speaking openly about how I felt was just an excuse to end our friendship because we were already growing apart. Me, one thing about me is I was a venter. And I wouldn't say I still am. There's nothing really to vent about nowadays. And, like, I guess if there was something that I felt really deeply emotional about, I would still vent to the Internet because I don't see anything wrong with that. 
but back then I was definitely a venter and so I vented about her online to my online friends because there was a lot of hurt and frustration there and I guess like my mom didn't like it when I vented about her but like my mom did some things <laughs> that you probably don't want people to know and like with that friend I guess when I vented about her it kind of felt like I was like attacking her like putting her in a position where she couldn't defend herself and I guess that's the big problem that people have with being talked about in videos about things especially it could feel like some people misconstrued the situation um, I've had someone talk about me in a video and like the way they describe me is I'm just this ditzy girl like kind of like legit she described me as an idiot and I was like I did feel some type of way about that so I guess it does make sense that people would feel some type of way about that and then I had another guy oh my gosh and I, I think this could be a story time in and of itself but this guy um, had a problem with me and rightfully so he did have a problem with me but the things that he said online um kind of involved how uh i was going to get gang attacked the attack with the r word and i mean gang attacked if you don't know that's multiple people attacking you at the same time and again i said the r word gang attack so anyway um <laughs> the people that i love so far my mom my dad my sister my sister fifth grade teacher middle school crush high school crush best friend from high school i would say antoinette is my best friend from high school um my first boyfriend adult boyfriend and next for my first boyfriend who i just talk about oh uh, Sabria. That was someone I wanted to be in my life forever. I was like, we're going to grow old together. But, you know, life has different different decisions. And like I said, it, it's not entirely... I wouldn't say it's entirely on me. It's definitely not entirely on her. But there was also a piece where we were just growing apart. Um, and in past, Sabria, let me think, let me think. Ooh, it's 8.30. But past Sabria, I would say Stuart. Definitely, I love Stuart. Like, I do love Stuart. He'd be pissing me off, but I love Stuart. If you don't know, Stuart is my husband. Um, there's a whole playlist called Meet the Husband. Check it out if you got time. He shows up from time to time. Like, like he, that's my husband. There's a lot there, but I love him. <laughs> Boom. And next, past my husband, loving him. Mm. Mm. Who? Who do I love now? Who? My husband. Oh, my internet friends. My internet friends. There, there's so many. I'm not gonna name you all, okay? Mostly because if I forget one, but I do love them, then they be like, oh, you don't love me? No, nah, I'm just kidding. You guys would never do that to me, right? But, yeah, my internet friends. Um, one person that can stand out above all of them, all the rest, I'm going to say Blue. Blue Waffles. If you guys are ever on TikTok, go ahead and check out her TikTok page, Blue Waffles. And if you're my friend and you have a TikTok, leave your links down below. We support each other here. But <laughs> leave your information down below. Yeah, I'm down for it because, like, you're my friend. But, like, Blue Waffles is definitely number one. That's because now that I've been overseas, Blue is the one who's always sending me emails and keeping up with me. And it's like I'm so thankful to have someone 
who will actively pursue me because I get lost in the sauce a lot. And so she will actively pursue me and I feel the love. And also I don't feel the pressure. Like I like I let them know before I came here. Like sometimes your your message will just sit in my inbox. I will see it, I will read it the day of, but it will sit there for a while. And I don't feel like she hates me because of it. And I can like get back to her and I feel like my battery is dying. So this is where we go ahead and end the story. Um, I want to thank you for listening to this point if you're still here. And I will see you next time. You see, my videos don't always have to be dark and gloomy. Sometimes I can talk about love. Which also takes kind of a dark and gloomy have to tell you because my love is very convoluted not the love I give but the love I feel it's very conflicted and I think that's what love is what is love to you I want to leave us with that question what is love to you again much love and positive vibes I hope to see you again next time like and subscribe if you haven't already